but then we we found some algorithmic gains, um, particularly around reasoning, but also some other things that let us do a a tiny model that can do this amazing thing. And you know, those are those are the most fun things. That's like kind of the coolest part of the job. I can see you really enjoying thinking about this. I'm curious for people who don't quite know what you're talking mm-hmm. about, who aren't familiar with how an algorithmic design yeah. would lead to a better experience that they actually use. Could you summarize the state of things right now? Like what, what is it that you're thinking about when you're thinking about how fun this problem is? Let me start back in history and then I'll get to some things Please. from today. So GPT-1 was an idea at the time that was quite mocked by a lot of experts in the field, which was, can we train a model to play a little game, which is show it a bunch of words and have it guess the one that comes next in the sequence. That's called unsupervised learning. There's not, you're not really saying like, this is a cat, this is a dog. You're just saying, here's some words, guess the next one. And the fact that that can go learn these very complicated concepts that can go learn all the stuff about physics and math and programming and keep predicting the word that comes next and next and next and next seemed ludicrous, magical, unlikely to work. Like, how was that all going to get encoded? And yet humans do it. You know, babies start hearing language and figure out what it means kind of largely, uh, or at least to some significant degree uh, on their own. And, and so we did it. And then we also realized that if we scaled it up, it got better and better. But we had to scale over many, many orders of magnitude. So it wasn't that good in the GPT-1 day. It wasn't good at all in the GPT-1 days. And a lot of experts in the field said, oh, this is ridiculous. It's never going to work. It's not going to be robust. But we had these things called scaling laws. 